Manchester's Oxford Road, home to the city's university, is an area steeped in historical significance. Lord Ernest Rutherford, along with the German physicist Niels Bohr, for example discovered the structure of atoms during the 1910s in a building that now bears his name on Bridgeford Street, just off Oxford Road. Another of Rutherford's collaborators, Hans Geiger, developed a prototype for the famous Geiger counter used for testing radiation levels on the same site. During the late 1940s, the first computers, the Baby and the Mark I, were developed by the mathematician Alan Turing in a building just on the other side of Oxford Road. While in art, the painter Ellis Lowry studied at the then Municipal College of Art, which is now part of Manchester Metropolitan University, a little further down the road. Today, Oxford Road is a major thoroughfare, nicknamed the Corridor, the busiest bus route in Europe, where some 37,000 people work, and the location of new and exciting architectural projects such as the University Place Lecture Theatre, built in 2008. But it was not always this way, however. At the beginning of the 19th century, George Holyoke, a cooperative pioneer, described Oxford Road in the following manner. As you enter Manchester from Rushholm, the town at the lower end of Oxford Road has the appearance of one dense volume of smoke, more forbidding than the entrance to Dante's Inferno. But it is in the writings of the German social thinker Frederick Engels that we have perhaps the most striking description of Oxford Road. In his classic work on the condition of the working class in England, he famously described industrial Manchester in the 1840s, a town whose inhabitants had been forced to sacrifice the best qualities of their human nature. Hundreds of thousands crowd past each other, as though they have nothing in common, nothing to do with one another. The brutal indifference, the unfeeling isolation of each in his private interest, becomes the more repellent and offensive, the more these individuals are crowded together within a limited space. The dissolution of mankind into monads, each of which has a separate principle, the world of atoms, is here carried out to its utmost extreme. Everywhere, barbarous indifference, hard egotism on the one hand, and nameless misery on the other. Everywhere, social warfare, every man's house in a state of siege, everywhere reciprocal plundering under the protection of the law, and also shameless, so openly avowed that one shrinks before the consequences of our social state as they manifest themselves here undisguised, and can only wonder that the whole crazy fabric still hangs together. Engels was particularly fascinated by Little Ireland, which he described as the most horrible spot in Manchester. It lies immediately southwest of Oxford Road, in a rather deep hole, in a curve of the Medlock, and surrounded on all four sides by tall factories and high embankments. Covered with buildings stand two groups of about 200 cottages, built chiefly back to back, in which live about 4,000 human beings, most of them Irish. The cottages are old, dirty, and of the smallest sort, the streets uneven, fallen into ruts and in parts without drains or pavement. Masses of refuse, offal and sickening filth lie among standing pools in all directions. The atmosphere is poisoned by the effluvia of these, and laden and darkened by the smoke of a dozen tall factory chimneys. A horde of ragged women and children swarm about here, as filthy as the swine that thrive upon the garbage heaps and in the puddles. Those that live in these ruinous cottages, behind broken windows, mended with oilskins, sprung doors and rotten doorposts, or in dark, wet cellars, in measureless filth and stench, in this atmosphere penned in as if with a purpose, must really have reached the lowest stage of humanity. This is the impression and the line of thought which the exterior of this district forces upon the beholder. But in reality, it is the most demoralised class of all Manchester that lives in these ruinous and filthy districts. In view of such district, it is perhaps not surprising that Oxford Road was the theatre of the first general strike in British history in 1842, sparked by mill owners declaring unilaterally that they would reduce wages by 25%. Some of the fiercest violence associated with the general strike occurred on Oxford Road at the level of Charles Street, near what is now the BBC building. But perhaps the most famous rebellion that can be associated with Oxford Road is the intellectual revolution fomented by Engels' partnership with Karl Marx, which spawned the doctrine of communism and made social inequality and its resolution the central focus of modernity. Manchester in general, and Oxford Road more specifically, arguably played key roles in shaping the evolution of the theory of communism. Engels lived for over 20 years in Manchester. Although he was German, his father owned cotton mills here, and he was sent to work for the family firm in 1842. 
Engels was horrified by the living and working conditions that he encountered in Manchester, especially after taking up with Mary Burns, a factory worker in his father's mills, who was his guide to the Mancunian underworld. On the basis of his experiences, he wrote The Condition of the Working Class in England, which was a book which significantly influenced Karl Marx, so much so that Marx visited Engels here in Manchester to work with him in 1845, and actually wrote many elements and many parts of his works here in Manchester in consultation with Engels, including Bart's Das Kapital, which were written in a house which stood at this spot at 27 Cecil Street. Over the years, Engels lived on other streets off or near Oxford Road, including Burlington Street, Real Street or Dover Street. Dover Street is also where the Victorian novelist Elizabeth Gaskell, famous for her novel Mary Barton about the travails of the working poor in Manchester, once resided with her family. There is no evidence that her and Engels ever met, but their common social consciousness can in many ways be seen very much as a product of their environment, that is to say, of Oxford Road. And when seen from this perspective, it is perhaps especially appropriate for the University of Manchester to be located here and to continue the tradition of radical social thought pioneered by Frederick Engels and Elizabeth Gaskell.